You are listening to Scars and Guitars, the podcast series. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and this is my fascinating conversation with Francis and Alan from the Satanic Temple, New Zealand. Let's see what they have to say. Here we go. Welcome you to the show. Let's get the big one out of the way first. According to your Facebook page, you are a non-theistic religion and do not believe in a literal Satan. Rather, to us or to you guys, he is a potent symbol of rebellion against religious tyranny. So, any assumptions that you worship Satan in the classical sense are completely incorrect. Rather, Satan is used as a figurehead in your pursuit of freedom and a life free of religious guilt. Am I about right with that assessment and statement? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, it's really embracing the sort of uh, literary archetype, uh, especially sort of romantic, um, like Milton's Paradise Lost, uh, France's Revolt of the Angels, that sort of um, archetype of Satan as the adversary. Um, so the Satanic Temple attracts a, a lot of people that are sort of uh, outside, uh, you know, feel like outsiders in society, but also that are, that are standing up to that arbitrary authority. Uh, and so we, we don't uh, worship uh, Satan in that literal sense, um, but rather just, just embrace that um, sort of adversary archetype. Yeah, a lot of it's about embracing, embracing like just human nature and as it is in humanity as well, I think. Yeah, so it's about reaching into who we are as primal people, our carnal desires. Have I got it about right there? I don't want to get it, you know, I don't want to give the listeners the wrong impression because I'm unschooled about the satanic temple. So, but I think people, you know, when I talk to people, when I, when I mentioned that I was going to be interviewing you guys, of course, oh yeah, the devil worshippers, I said, no, no, it's not like that at all. It's more about using Satan as a figurehead and then leaning into who we are and standing within our own truth. Absolutely. You know, so... I understand the Satanic Temple was founded by Lucian Greaves in 2013. How does, or even does, the Satanic Temple differ from LaVey Satanism? And for the listeners out there, can you describe what LaVey Satanism is, as I'm sure you are far more informed about it than I? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I sort of think of the Satanic Temple as a, a modern evolution um, in terms of modern Satanism. Uh, which most people see as started by Anton LaVey in 1966 with the Church of Satan. Uh, and uh, I think the Satanic Bible and the Church of Satan certainly emphasize that uh, very individualistic nature and sort of self-empowerment, um, seeing uh, yourself as your own God. Um, the Satanic Temple is, is sort of... Uh, evolved in that it, it's looking at, at a, sort of a community of Satanists um, that are civic, civically minded uh, and sort of striving to act with compassion and empathy uh, and, and spread that throughout society rather than just being completely individualistic. I like what you just said there about civil action or you would use words to the effect. So how does one participate in satanic activism? Is there a proactive philosophy around recruitment in the manner that, say, Christianity and Islam have adopted? Uh, the short answer to that is no. Uh, so the satanic temple is quite firmly against sort of pros proselytizing um, and preaching and sort of that recruitment that uh, is often associated with, um, you know, some, some fundamentalist Christian churches or the Mormons that go out. Um, so really, we see people coming to us. Uh, so for whatever reasons, they've sort of looked into um, dif different beliefs. A lot of people come across, say, the Satanic Bible or that sort of thing, um, and then move towards Satanism on their own, uh, and then come across the Satanic Temple. Um, so, so yeah, we, we sort of um, we don't have any children in the temple. Uh, it's, it's very much about that um, idea that, that people should um, act within their own reason um, and, and have their beliefs sort of based on scientific fact uh, and, 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 and make up their minds for themselves as, as adults. Can you, Can you describe the average Satanist, if there is such a thing? I don't, I don't think you could, no. Um, it's so varied. One of my favourite, I think when we did our first big campaign, um, someone contacted 
me on the Facebook page wanting to donate socks and our souls to Satan. And um, he was the classic kind of, um, like, farmer. Like, he, I think he was at around 65. He, there was, his profile picture was him with his tractor in a paddock. And, you know, he just said, I think I'm a pretty good guy and I've read the Satanic Bible and I'd like to help out and I'd like to join. And I thought, wow, you know, there's... I think people expect, like, the goth kids and the metalheads, and, but it's, it's everyone. Yeah, no, for sure. Look, I, I've I've never met a Satanist. You guys are actually the first Satanist that I've been introduced to. Um, so I'm in touch, obviously, with people in the music community, particularly around hard rock and heavy metal and rock and roll. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I've, I've certainly never met anybody that's... And I talk about, you know, I try to get to know people as well as I can, particularly because I'm interviewing people and the like. Nobody's ever said that they are. So I had to sort of make an, an assumption that they're coming from other parts of society. So... Doctors, lawyers, now farmers. You know, they're all Satanists. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And with the Satanic Temple, I think there's just a huge amount of diversity uh, because they're a, a socially progressive group. Um, so there's a lot of people from the LGBTQ community um, and a lot of people that, that just sort of end up as, as feeling a bit... Um, like they're othered in society. So especially in the United States, there's uh, areas that are extremely um, sort of fundamentalist Christian. Um, not not everyone fits into that um, group and they find that themselves sort of um, reaching out, especially with the internet these days, um, to meet like-minded people. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. The internet probably has meant that, you know, there's been an explosion of ideas around the world, some good and some really shitty, excuse my language, but has, has the internet helped the satanic cause? Uh, I, I think so, yes. Um, I mean, it, it, it was sort of quite lively um, in terms of like the old message boards and that sort of thing. That was b before I came to Satanism. Um, I'm sort of quite a, quite a recent convert. Um, but but there, there was, that was sort of an initial way of um, Satanists sort of keeping in touch with each other, uh, especially internationally. Um, so groups like the Church of Satan and, and some of the other satanic um, temples and sects uh, would would sort of uh, reach out across those message boards and the internet, um, and especially with the satanic temple um, sort of being very recent, really. Um, uh, you know, the Facebook group is huge. Um, the website um, really professional. Mm. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, it's it's been a huge way in people being able to communicate, um, especially freely. Uh, and, and with people, you know, outside their social circle or, or, or family group or, or church. Yeah. So let's hit this topic. Theistic Satanism is the worship of Satan as a religious entity, and it is rather controversial according to many in the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan, I gather. The head of the Church of Satan even went so far, that's Peter H. Gilmore, as saying that he considers devil worship to be a Christian heresy. So in essence, he's saying that it's effectively a Christian construct. You're really one and the same. And that's something that Satanists are actively rejecting. So do you find that you receive approaches from people who actually want to worship the devil as a deity? I think there are quite a few allies of the temple that are theistic Satanists. Um, I don't think, like, they don't really bring their beliefs into the temple as such but we don't you know we don't really seem to hear much from them do we track them, yeah. yeah yeah i mean we, we get approaches especially uh, say through the facebook page and i know it happens with all the chapters um around the world uh, uh especially from sort of southeast asian countries and african countries you get these messages you know can you um you know help make me rich or um oh, yeah, per nice. perform some sort of ritual you know to um to um, demonize the people that, I, that i'm against or um you, you know yeah sell your soul to satan that sort of thing yeah um but yeah there, there's certainly theistic satanists out there uh 
but it's difficult to know. I guess they're probably less public with what they do um, in terms of, you know, if they, if they are sort of really worshipping a, a dark lord and, and that sort of thing. And and obviously there's that sort of association with, with sacrifices or... Um, yeah, the Hollywood version of it, yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. So uh, we, we haven't had too much of that. We've, we've had... Uh, People, you know, get in touch and say they they want to sacrifice chickens. We've had uh, mm. one guy that, that wanted to have satanic sex and was asking us about that, which was, was quite funny, yeah. really, to us. Jeez, I'm not yeah. really sure what that entails. He was the girl who wanted the magical calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a recent one. Yeah. Yeah, we get some odd requests. I bet. So how do you – so you get these requests, and I take it – but the both of you are at the head of the pyramid or the top of the pyramid, so to speak, in the organisation in New Zealand. So do you field all of the people that want to join the temple in New Zealand? At, at the moment, yes. Uh, we've only recently become an official chapter and um, there is actually um, now sort of documentation in place for accepting um, officially members um, into the the temple chapters, and that's not something that we've done yet. Um, so we're sort of at the early stage of of building our community, um, and especially with with New Zealand sort of being, I mean, it's not a big country, but spread out in a way that we've got sort of the main centres. Uh, we're still establishing, I, I guess, we've got a national council um, and and leaders in each um, area. And, and we're sort of looking at, at starting that more formal process um, of membership probably next year um, if, if people want to um, take that step to sort of join formally. How do you deal with the misconceptions that are out there? You now, we've talked about the Hollywood version, so the sacrificing of virgins, drinking goat's blood and the horror movie aesthetic that can unfortunately be linked to the temple. How do you deal with the misconceptions in the day to day? Do you just not worry about it, or is it something where you actually are proactively trying to change people's misconceptions? Yeah, uh, I mean, especially with with when we've had, um, say, media interests, uh, it's really, I mean, using that short space of time that you've got um, to get across, you know, what we are, or, uh, who we are, and what our beliefs are. Um, so for us uh, at this stage, it's sort of we point people towards the Satanic Temple website. There's a, you know a lot of the the frequently asked questions, um, the, the mission statement, and the seven tenets. Um, so people can learn from there. So we do get get people that are uh, I guess have that um, Levian Satanism idea in their head. Um, maybe they've read the Satanic Bible, um, so they're, they're sort of coming at us thinking that that's who we are, and it's it's really sort of um, I guess delineating how we're we're different um, and and just um, being very clear on on what our beliefs are and and whether people um, you know have to work out for themselves whether or not it's a fit for them. So, for the both of you, I'd love it if you could share with the listeners your journey to the Satanic Temple. For example, were you both raised and educated as Christians, and if so, were you always intrigued by the left hand path? Um, I came to Satanism. When I was about, I think I was about 18, I got my first copy of the Satanic Bible. So it was quite a long time ago. Um, I remember there was no, like, ordering it through Amazon or anything. I had to order it through Whitcalls. And I remember the young girls um, were quite terrified every time I'd pop in to see if my Bible had arrived or not yet. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I found it helped me a lot when, it, when I was a teenager. Um to grow a spine, I think, is what I really needed. And then I kind of, when I moved past or kind of grew out of the Church of Satan, I took the parts that were useful to me and then kind of cobbled together um, bits I took from other things, like maybe the works of Albert Camus and stuff like that, and um, carried on from there until I came across the Satanic Temple. And I followed their work for a while and um, decided that I thought that'd be a really good fit. Yeah, okay. Uh, and for me, uh, I think Frankie and I actually have um, two quite different paths to Satanism um, that 
sort of figure quite prominently in other members. So like she said, it was something that as a teenager, she came across Satanic Bible, um, really kind of came into it on her own. Um, I'm sort of from the, the other branch that you find, especially a lot of the ones in the States. Um, I was raised as a Roman Catholic, so so had that Christian upbringing um, and, and with the, all the, the song and ceremony that the Roman Catholic Church has. Um, and then came to question it all, I guess, in my teenage years uh, because of the hypocrisy of the church and that sort of thing. I pretty much rejected all religion. Um, so I was pretty skeptical of, of Satanism when I was first uh, introduced to it. And I, I read up a lot about the, the temple and um, especially, you know, quite a bit of scathing criticism of um, Lucian Greaves and, and the Satanic Temple. Um and then sort of uh, through my own um, research into it and, um, you know, just found that the, the seven fundamental tenets was, was sort of what I already believed in um, and then made contact with um, other members uh, through the Internet and, and just found really that it was just a perfect fit. It was sort of like coming home in a way, um, just just meeting a community um, that that um, were just totally like minded. And you find that there's there's a lot of people that that come from um, backgrounds like that, um, not necessarily Christian, but sort of religiously raised, um, have come to reject that as they've um, come into adulthood, and then maybe just just come across either yeah Levian Satanism or just come to the Satanic Temple. Yeah, and I think your journey, Alan, it sounds like Satan the text. So start again. The Temple of Satan is an ideological fit to what you already believed, and I think in like I've toyed with the idea of Satanism, of course, because that's why I'm interested in it. And Francis, my story is a bit similar to yours, and that I remember going into I can't remember the name of the big bookstore that we used to have here. No doubt it was in Australia as well. Um, of course, it's closed down now because of the Amazons and the Ebays and the like. But I remember purchasing the Satanic Bible from the shelf and a How to Speak French book from the shelf as well and handing it to the lass on the counter and the look that I got from her. <laughs> she, uh, I think she made some comment about having very interesting tastes in literature or something. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I, I found a lot did resonate in the Satanic Bible, I've got to tell you that, and I found that I did... I kept on going back to it. What I didn't understand was the stuff that it was, the, the, you know, the half of the book is, um, it's like poetry or prose or are they, forgive me for using the word, but spells or something toward the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, what are they? Um, I'm not sure either. I've never, the like, they were called the keys or something. That's I right, think. a notion of oh, keys, I think. Keys, yeah. yeah, I was never really too clear on that part either. I tend to stick to the front of the Bible as well. Well, that was, yeah, that was what confused me because I bought this, you know, 200-page book or what have you, and it's only really 80 pages long. Now, Absolutely. In a way that's yeah. great because you can absorb most of the information, but I thought there was more detail in it with all due respect. But, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, when I found that when I got my copy, it wasn't what I was expecting either, yeah. really. What do you guys think of the media portrayal of LeVay? Because invariably he gets called a uh, almost like a pop culture icon by some aspects of the media but the other there is another side that take him very seriously and think he had a tremendous impact um yeah what are your guys thoughts on LeVay as as a human being I think he was a wonderful showman I think he was an interesting character I would have loved to have met him yeah but, and, uh, sorry you go yeah it's hard to tell with him what He's taking seriously, and what is a joke, like a private joke for him on the public? I think. Hmm. Yeah, it's um, it was interesting too that I read just in my research that his daughter Zena, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. I mean, I've only read articles. I don't know whether they're true, but has disowned him. Oh gosh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah I, I, I believe that's correct, yeah. Um, I, I think for a while she was um, sort of very high up in the Church of Satan. Spot on, yeah. Uh, and, and was sort of looking Satan looking at, um, you know, yeah. taking over from LeVay possibly. Um, but then, um, and I think her, her partner, Nicholas Shrek, was also involved. Um, and, and they both, yeah, yeah split, um, you know, and, and she sort of put out, I guess, public statements that were quite critical of her father and, and um, 
yeah, definitely um, sort of pushing herself away from from the church. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's another conspiracy theory doing the rounds, and this one's completely absurd, but it's a bit humorous, that Taylor Swift is actually Zena LaVey reincarnated <laughs> because they look so similar, right? It's actually eerie how similar they look. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. I actually read that um, Zena was really quite upset by that, and she ended up getting quite depressed, and I think she, like, shut herself in her home for quite a while that's what i read anyway yeah well okay Gosh. That's bizarre. yeah well, the the version that i thought was that that you know she was one in the same so rather than being a reincarnation there was sort of some sort of satanic witchery there that allowed She's her to, to stay younger. youthful and um <laughs> yeah and think to yourself as a, a pop star Fantastic. <laughs> yeah it was it was there's all sorts of funny things that come out in the internet but that one was not one i was expecting to stumble over actually in my research for our chat today and I read a few articles and thought, my gosh, people have got far too much time on their hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know so um, the paranormal, occult themes, and even belief in extraterrestrial life, what role do they play in modern Satanism? Yeah, I, I mean, I think um, it's quite a common question um, to the Satanic Temple. Uh, people sort of come along and say, well, you know, how do you guys approach ritual for example, you know, if you if you don't believe in the supernatural, um, what what's what's your interest there? How do you, you know a lot of people have altars, um, a satanic imagery, whether it's sort of um, the sigil or seal of Lucifer, um, the Definitely. the sulphur or the the Baphomet goat goat um, goat headed that sort of deity, um, and I think. For a lot of people, the ritual is is more um, just a process of, of how you deal with um, emotional um, or like a psychodrama. Or, yeah, psychodrama being played out. Um, so so rather than believing that you're you know putting a spell on someone or or um, sort of affecting you know praying to a deity or somehow affecting your life supernaturally, um, it might be more of of just um, that sort of ritual that people do in their everyday lives um, of just you know. Think, thinking about even meditation or, or thinking about, you know, how you want things to go. Um, so I, I think the, the ritual and the imagery is, is just something that, that people enjoy and um, are drawn to anyway. So, um, you know, that, and that often goes with the music scene as well. So. It does indeed. To yeah. me, you know, to me it just seems like a way of meditating. And I know you mentioned that. It's a way of staying centred, isn't it? You know, less, less, far less so than it is reaching for some sort of um, somebody in the sky or some sort of a deity. It's really about taking focus and standing within your own truth and and meditating. And I was, it's, sorry, you, you go, Francis. Oh no, I was disagreeing with you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's. Um, I was reading with interest, though. Okay, this is something I, w I will ask you guys about. This not on your page, but on a few other pages, um, both. Um, the LaVey Satanist page, Facebook page, and the Satanic Temple pages from other countries, people have experienced paranormal occurrences when they've been meditating or um, reciting chants or mantras or what have you. Have you guys had any experiences like that? I haven't, no. Yeah, not me personally. Um, I am certainly tend to think of myself as a sceptic. Um, He's a super skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't go in for the the, the sort of supernatural or, or paranormal stuff. Um, you know, whether whether people do themselves, I, I think that's that's a personal thing. Um, and, and with the Satanic Temple, they're quite clear that that um, our beliefs should conform to our best scientific understanding of the world. Um, but at the same time, that they you know, are quite open to having allies that maybe are, are theistic Satanists or, um, or um, okay. you know, even from, from other religious groups or have other beliefs um, that, that are sort of up, up to the individual um, but don't figure into um, the official sort of stance of the temple. Do you, this is a good question actually, I should have raised this one earlier, but do you experience any conflict from um, the Christian church in New Zealand, whether it's, you know, the Protestant church or the Catholic church, are they, are they picketing do they know where you guys are in terms of where you congregate? And are they? Do they completely misunderstand what you are? And are they actively picketing in the way that that idiotic church in the states, the Westboro Baptist Church, does with all of these events? Actually, um, when the media did approach another church about our souls for Satan campaign, they were 
that one church was really understanding. Um, I can't remember the direct quote, but I think he said something along the lines of whether you're doing something good in the name of God or in the name of Satan, you're still doing something good. So, you know, it's fine. They, they did approach a more fundamental Christian who did who said we were like a gang or something. I can't remember something to that effect. But, um, yeah, we haven't had much grief from them at all, really, have we? Yeah, I mean, we're still, um, you know, quite a quite a small group, um, and still in that quite early stage of of building um, our community um, as the Satanic Temple New Zealand. Uh, so we really just had that that one major campaign um, earlier in the year where we got the media coverage, and and they went and asked a, a couple of different um, churches, uh, with yeah, one being supportive, one basically saying, you know, they're just a publicity stunt. Um, which I, I think is quite similar to um, stuff that comes out of the United States that, that, that people sort of say, oh, they're just trolling Christianity uh, or, or, you know, it's just a, a publicity stunt. Um, it's not a real religion, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, quite often they, they get that approach. Um, but we don't have the sort of really strong um, opposition, I think, um, just that, that New Zealand is um, not such a religious country, really. Yeah, it's a bit like Australia these days, isn't, isn't it? I think with the, the people of a Western background in New Zealand and Australia are basically becoming irreligious, I think, in, from the perspective that we're moving away from. I was raised as a Roman Catholic. Um, you know, I've had the kids baptised in St John's here in Brisbane and the like, but that's more about um, ritual. You know, that yeah, far yeah. less yeah. so than it is about giving them any indoctrination to the church's values or what have you. It was just an honestly a nice way to sort of bring the family and friends together for, an, for a, a, a day celebration, if you like, of the kids' lives. It was just a milestone event, really. You know. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, and, and I think that's the thing is that, that you know, a lot of people, um, you know, that, that it will differ to the individual how strong their beliefs are. And, and for some, it's, it's just part of family or community. Um, or, or tradition even, um, and, you know, there are probably a lot of Kiwis that, that go to church on the sort of few days a year, Easter, Christmas, um, but but aren't sort of, uh, you know, considering themselves really religious or, or you know, yeah, going I mean, to church. I'm exactly every- like that. Yeah, me, me and my wife are exactly like that. We just go on the serious days, or what we call the serious days, but as I say, it's more about ritual and occasion than it is about any sort of belief we have. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, having grown up uh, as a Roman Catholic, there's, you know, um, I don't have any, you know, hideous, terrible stories or anything like that. Um, um, you know, and and some of them sort of quite, quite um, happy memories. So you know, I understand. Yeah, likewise, uh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, you know, the, the Roman Catholic thing has that kind of, um, you know, pomp and circumstance that, that uh, at the time I thought was pretty cool that. Um, probably don't go for so much now. Hmm. With the change in the political landscape in New Zealand, so say with Jacinda Ardern coming on board as the new Prime Minister, what will that mean to the church? Or sorry, the temple, sorry. Um, I I think it opens the door to um, a couple of of topics that, um, you know, are certainly uh, very big within the temple in the United States. So, Uh, One is certainly women's reproductive rights. Um, At the moment, abortion is still um, a crime under the Crimes Act in New Zealand. So uh, it it is legal, but you have to sort of go through, um, you know, these steps where you have two certifying consultants um, agree that there's going to be serious um, sort of physical or mental harm to the mother should the pregnancy continue um, and between two week wait period. Yeah, there's sort of often I think the average is like 25 days between um, your first um, uh, consultancy and and having the procedure done, which which has shocked sort of people in the states, uh, you know, because they maybe have four, 48 hours. Um, so there, there's there's different issues there, um, but the the third tenet um, of the Satanic Temple is is one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone, um, and that's sort of touted as the main one with uh, with reproductive rights. And and Jacinda Ardern had said in in the lead up to the election that 
Um, she would like to see abortion um, taken out of the Crimes Act. Um, so that that's something that we feel that we can um, certainly push towards. Um, otherwise, I, I think we're just hopeful that that it's going to be a more socially progressive government um, that's that's going to just um, you know treat people with more empathy and compassion um, and, and look to reduce inequality, which you know is, is a, a huge thing throughout the world. Mm. Yeah, okay, that's a really good point, actually, there. Yeah, well, I mean, you probably have seen in the news and in the media that Australia's just voted yes through a plebiscite, not a plebiscite. Yeah, it was a plebiscite, I think we had, wasn't it? A postal vote. Yeah, the postal one, yeah. Yeah, uh, the uh, the gay marriage thing. Um, and, look, to be honest, it wasn't as overwhelmingly favourable as what I thought it was going to be. It was uh, about three quarters of the population participated in the vote, and yeah. the yes vote was only about 60 Two percent or so. Yeah, yeah. That's... Wow. So is that binding? No, it's yeah, it's not binding. But gosh, for the current government to not implement it very quickly would be political suicide. Simple as okay. that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, that's... it'll it'll go through. There's no question it'll go through. We we didn't even need to have a postal vote on it. It's common sense at this point in time. You know, um, it was just a waste of money. I think a lot of people feel. Right, right. It seems quite rude to let people have a vote on people's rights. It does. You're right, yep. and that's what a lot of um, you know, a lot of people who are obviously pro uh, homosexual marriage. That's yeah, that's what they're saying. How, how should you have a right to say what how I lead my life? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's an interesting situation. But we we have a conservative government in power here at the moment, although. In Australia these days, the Liberal and Labor governments are so centrist that you can almost not tell them apart. But there are yeah, 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 absolutely, same, very, yeah. very similar here. Yeah, there are forces in in the conservative side of things. Corey Bernardi and the um, I think they call them Family First groups. You know, when they say Family First, they're really just an extreme right wing Christian organisation. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and they're allowed to have their say. There's no question about that. But you know what their agenda is going to be before they even fire a pamphlet in anger. You know. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think Malcolm Turnbull will last the next election, actually. I don't, I, actually, I definitely don't think he'll last, whether he's replaced by somebody within the Liberal Party and they get re-elected or whether or not Bill Shorten gets in, I think, is, is a matter for history to determine. But, yeah, I think um, I'm not really sure on, our, on, our, on the country's stance on um, abortion, but I'm pretty sure it's legal here. Correct me if you know otherwise. Yeah, I'm. I'm not absolutely sure on um, on the status of abortion in Australia. There was that story. Remember, the woman was told if she couldn't get one in New Zealand, she should fly to Australia. To right. Yeah. 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 I'm not too sure either. Mm. Okay. Well, I'll finish up with my final question. How do people okay. who are interested in exploring the philosophy reach out to the temple? Now, I appreciate that you guys are based in New Zealand, but a lot of people that do listen to the podcast are from overseas, so they might reach out to you to say, hey, I listen to the podcast, I'm in this country here. How do I get in touch? Is it via Facebook or is there a web page that they should go to? Yeah, I mean, definitely the satanictemple.com uh, is the, the main website, Um there's a, a, a you know a heap of information there. Um, also, the, the Facebook group, um, the official forum for the temple is huge. Um, pretty much all the chapters uh, uh, in the states and around the world have a, a Facebook group. Uh, so so we've got the the Satanic Temple New Zealand chapter. Um, before we gained official status, we were just known as Satanic New Zealand. Um, I think there there maybe was sort of a, a group possibly in Melbourne that that um, had sort of been looking at, at being a chapter, um, but a, that that was sort of defunct. Now there there no, is a group a called one. a new one yeah. called Satanic Australia, hmm. uh, so you can look them up on Facebook, um, and I, I think they're sort of similar to us that are very closely aligned in terms of following the the seven tenets and the Satanic Temple. Um, and and looking to um, be an official chapter, um, so certainly uh, yeah, I'd look at Satanic Australia on Facebook um, for for those in Australia. Um, otherwise, yeah, just just sort of search for the Satanic Temple um, on Facebook or um, go to the Satanic Temple dot com. But yeah, please do message our page if you are looking, if anyone's looking, and we'll gladly help you out. 
Wonderful. Well, I'm sure everybody out there will appreciate that. And look, guys, this has been a wonderful discussion. Thank you for being so open-minded and agreeing to being interviewed by a bloke who typically interviews musicians. Um, I think people are going to get a lot out of this, actually, and there's going to be a lot of misconceptions around what the Temple is all about that have been completely smashed apart. And I really hope people do get in touch with you because I think what you guys are doing is enormously positive for, for, for anybody, really, who's looking for an, for a an ideology that seeks to help people and also through through helping themselves. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith and that was my discussion with Francis and Alan from the Satanic Temple, New Zealand. Thank you so much for listening.